Hi, welcome to another Facebook Live with Veterinary Referral Center of Central Oregon. I'm Jen Bentley, the dermatologist here, and our special guest for today is uh, Dr. Taylor Stockdale. Hello. Welcome back. She is our ER doctor here, well, one of them. And she's going to be talking about all things winter related, so cold, snow, um, and uh, skiing also with your dog and how to do that safely. So uh, before we jump into the discussion, um, just want to say happy Golden Retriever Dog Day. Uh, please check out the Facebook post that we have. We have some adorable pictures of Golden Retrievers and keep them coming. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get the discussion started, but as always, Feel free to ask questions for us. We want it to be a discussion with the audience at home, you guys. Um, so feel free to chime in and ask any questions that, that you want. Um, but so one of the things that you know we had been talking about just earlier is you are actually seeing a lot of skiing accidents yes. <laughs> with dogs, unfortunately. Yeah. I think it's probably here the most common thing we see on one given weekend day. I see maybe two or three lacerations oh, from gosh. dogs skiing with their owners. <laughs> and having a blast um but ski edges are sharp snowboard edges are sharp and i think all the dogs are just bouncing around and it's i'm guilty of it with my own dog and she cut her foot open when we skied too and it's a hard thing to avoid but there are some tips and tricks you can try and do just to try and keep them away from the edge of your ski to avoid those lacerations um booties are a really good option and not just for skiing but for all winter snow sports especially the longer haired dogs mm. they tend to get little ice balls that get stuck up between their toes and if your dog will tolerate booties that can be a saver on everything whether it's keeping their feet warm or staying away from lacerations from either the ice or your skis um doesn't really matter what brand i think there's all they're all different and they all fit a little different so if your dog finds one that fits best on them i think that's probably the best option yeah it does take a little bit of time to get used to yes. they walk a little <laughs> bit funny but they will get used to it they will yep and work on it in the house maybe first um That's with treats idea. and some <laughs> positive reinforcement they will get used to it eventually and they will be happier down the road too when their feet are a little bit more protected um but the other thing you can do is and something i use for one of our dogs is musher secret which is just my preference which is just a kind of an oily based wax that i rub on their feet and it helps provide an extra layer that just keeps the snow from getting clumped up on their toes too the bummer about that one is it won't protect against lacerations or anything sharp like an ice edge or ski edge um so the biggest thing if you are skiing with your dog is if you're you find that they do cut their foot which you'll probably notice pretty quick blood on snow is <laughs> pretty stark um, and it will probably look like a lot more blood than it truly is so stay calm um, but if you're going to ski with your dog be prepared and just have a bandage with you um, really that is just for the short term so it allows you to put a wrap around the foot and get back down to the bottom of the mountain or back to your car and get them to a vet they tend to be pretty clean lacerations, but that's good. Yeah, the feet are really vascular though, so yeah. it's a lot of blood, and they usually need a few stitches and at least get it cleaned out. And the sooner, the better for those, so they heal up well and can get back out in the snow. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you. That's really, really good advice. <laughs> Do you ever see, you know, besides ski uh, lacerations from skiing or snowboarding? Do you ever see? dogs actually get hyper hypothermic from being in these cold conditions or are they pretty tolerant of this i have seen it a few times um and it's it's dependent on a couple things i think it tends to be a little bit dependent on the coat so there are some dogs that are built for cold and they do a lot better out in the snow for longer the periods huskies. of time yeah <laughs> all the arctic breeds they do yeah. great bernie's mountain dogs they just love it and a lot of even like the labradors do pretty well with a thick coat right the bully breeds like boxers all the bulldogs um the pitties their short coarser hair doesn't do a lot for heat insulation for them so they benefit from a coat usually okay and then making sure they get dry that's where i really see it escalate quickly is if mm. they get wet in the snow and then they are still playing out in the snow or they've worked out really hard and are now wet and then when they go to cool off it just gets really cold really fast so it's important to have them somewhere warm like either back in the house or back in the car where they can recuperate without getting too cold too yeah. quickly 
makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Great. And then um, one of the, the kind of the winter dangers here mm -hmm. too um, is antifreeze. And I'm not sure if all antifreeze does the problems that we see. Can you explain a little bit about that and what antifreeze can do to animals? Yeah, so antifreeze is a really serious toxicity. Luckily, we don't tend to see it too, too often, but when we do, it can get really bad really fast. Um, and we say antifreeze, but really it's ethylene glycol. And that's a component of some antifreezes. And it's really ju judicious of you, if you can, if you have pets, to just get the antifreeze that is propylene gly glycol, which is a little different mm -hmm. compound and doesn't have the same toxic effects. Yeah, I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> yeah, then yeah. it's just not even an issue. But ethylene glycol in particular has a really sweet taste. And so if there's even like drips of it in the garage from the car or if it's spilled, or if animals have access to it, they can smell it and they'll go right after it. Um, so even cats I've seen get pretty serious antifreeze toxicities. Mm -hmm. And the problem with it is it goes into their body and it competes with some enzymes in there, but it can cause really severe kidney failure. And it happens really fast because of how quickly it's absorbed. Mm -hmm. So if there's any chance that you think your pet could have had exposure to antifreeze, I would call the poison hotline of your choice. Um, I use ASPCA and pet poison hotline, which we have posted on our blog. Yeah. Um, and then after that, you can get recommendations from the toxicologist, but usually it's something that they need to see a vet pretty quickly if there's even concern, and we can try and decontaminate it. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, if we know there's been ingestion, they do have to be in the hospital for several days while we try and outcompete this toxin to prevent it from causing trauma to the kidneys. Oh my gosh. So not, do they normally have a good prognosis if you get them in early, or is it? It's pretty variable. variable. Oftentimes, it's it's the time frame. If you can get them here within an hour or two, the prognosis can be pretty good, but knowing that your pet has gotten into it is the really it's hard part. So yeah. it's, a, it's a lot of preparedness for antifreeze and making sure that if you are using ethylene glycol, it's up high, it's not leaking, that your cars aren't leaking, or that your pets don't have access to that area. Right, right. Yeah. Well, great. Well, thank you so much. I mean, that's great advice, and we all love to take our animals out in the snow and, and do all these things with them, but I, we always see that it's a downside to everything, but, you know, do it snowed so much today. I hope you guys had, did have good fun in the snow with your pets today, um, but please, you know, take Dr. Tess Stockdale's advice and um, use these protective measures to keep your pets safe during this time.